Hi, it's Leigh from the Relax Scout Beauty channel and I wanted to put together a video to share with you my tips for building a healthy hair regimen. Since I started sharing about my hair, about my hair regimen, my hair routine, sharing tips for caring for your hair, I've gotten quite a few DMs, messages, emails from people asking me for help on how to help their hair become healthy, how to build their regimen, what products they should be using. Now, the thing is, I'm not a professional hairstylist. Everything that I share is based on my own research, my own experience. So when it comes to specific personal recommendations, I can't really do that. But what I can do, and what I am doing in this video, is sharing with you how you can build your own healthy hair regimen. So before we get into how to build that regimen, what is a hair regimen anyway? So a hair regimen is basically a structured routine using hair products and hair techniques to care for your hair. When I started my healthy hair regimen, I read a lot of blogs, I watched a lot of videos, and then just kind of jumped right into the deep end. And it was a learning process for me over a few years to kind of really figure out what types of products and techniques that I should be using for my hair. And now that I've been through it for a few years, I realized that I made it more difficult than it needed to be. So I'm going to share with you pretty much everything that I learned in this video so that hopefully you don't have to do this, go through what I went through. First tip is to really understand your hair type. And when you hear hair type, you might start thinking a lot about curl pattern. And that's not, totally what I'm talking about. I mean, if you're natural, then yes, you need to know what your curl pattern is that will help you choose certain products. But that's not the only thing that makes up your hair type. There are a couple of other things that I personally feel are pretty important to know because it helps you figure out certain techniques that you need to use and certain types of products that your hair will respond better to. So when it comes to hair type, knowing your hair porosity is pretty important. And the hair porosity is basically how your hair um, accepts and expels moisture. So low porosity hair has um, cuticles that are kind of flat so that moisture doesn't enter the hair cuticle very easily. But the great thing about that is because the hair cuticles are flat and closed, then once moisture does get in there, it doesn't leave very easily. So on the other end of the spectrum, which my hair is, is high porosity. And that means that your hair cuticles are raised, so moisture gets into your hair cuticles easily, but it also escapes just as easily. So it's hard to keep that hair moisturized and you have to use certain kinds of products and techniques to really help with that. The other thing about hair type that I think is important to know is your hair density. And basically that means if you have high density hair, you have a lot of hairs on your head, so your hair is kind of thick or dense. And if you have lower density hair, then you have fewer hairs on your head and your hair is less dense, so your hair doesn't look and isn't as thick. So my second tip is to know what your hair needs or what you need to fix about your hair. So that can be things such as dry hair, oily hair, frizzy hair, hair breakage, a lot of hair shedding, you name it, there's a multitude of things that your hair needs or things about your hair that you wanna fix. And so knowing that can also help you when you're picking out your products and picking out the techniques you're using for your hair. But once you've figured out your hair type, your hair needs, then it's time to go on to my third tip, which is to figure out your hair products. So what are the products that you're going to use for your hair regimen? Now, right now, I will warn you, I'm not going to go into any detail of recommending any products. I'm not even going to specifically mention any products, but what I am going to do is provide you with basically an outline of the product types that you should be using within a hair regimen. All right, so any hair regimen should have at least four types of products. That should be a cleanser, a conditioner, a moisturizer, and a sealant. When it comes to a cleanser, you need to find something that will not only just cleanse your hair or wash your hair, but also won't dry your hair out and strip your hair. So I personally like using a sulfate-free moisturizing shampoo. That's pretty much like my base type of shampoo. That's what is my go-to, and I find that it does great things for my hair. In addition to a sulfate-free moisturizing shampoo, as you go through your hair regimen and you know figure out which products actually work for you, you might find that you need a little bit more moisture. And that is where a co-wash might come in, which is a really gentle cleansing conditioner that you can use in place of a shampoo occasionally. 
And then if you find that you need to cleanse your hair more, you're finding that you're having product build up over time. And that can happen just because you use a lot of products and your sulfate free shampoo just can't get all of that off of your hair. You might also live in an area like I do where you have hard water. So if that's the case, you want to clarify your hair every so often. So you might want to use a sulfate shampoo for that, which I do, or a clarifying shampoo, which also has sulfates in it. Just a clarifying shampoo is a little harsher than just a regular sulfate shampoo. So you might want to weigh how much cleansing or stripping of um, product and oils and things that you need from your hair to determine whether you want to use a regular clarifying shampoo or just a sulfate shampoo. Now for conditioners. There's basically two types and I'm going to break it down for you. There's rinse out conditioners and there's deep conditioners. Rinse out conditioners are basically your average everyday conditioner that you put on your hair. You may leave on for like five minutes or you just lay, basically slather it on and then rinse it right out. It doesn't stay on for much longer than that. And really, I just find that they're good for adding an extra oomph of moisture or strength to your hair. I personally prefer deep conditioners. They have rich ingredients and they're really formulated to help either prevent dryness and damage in your hair or to help repair dry or damaged hair. So whether you're looking for repair or prevention, that's what you use a deep conditioner for. When it comes to choosing a deep conditioner, I say start with a nice moisturizing deep conditioner. It's a good one to start and have as your base deep conditioner as your first go-to. And then as you start to learn more about your hair and see how it reacts to products, then you can determine if you want to bring in a deep conditioner that has more protein ingredients in it that's to help with things like breakage. The third product type as I mentioned, is to have a moisturizer. And that is basically to help keep your hair moisturized and manageable in between your washes. If you're looking for a moisturizer, I found that some of the best ones that work for me are ones that have water as like the first ingredient in them, just because water is like the best moisturizer you can have for your hair. Because I have dense, high porosity hair, I prefer to use a lot of cream leave-in conditioners to help moisturize my hair. Some people prefer liquids because they work better for their hair type. Um, but you know, that's where you've got to figure out and maybe try a few to see what might work. But knowing what your hair porosity and your hair um, needs are can help kind of guide you in the best direction. Because if you have low density hair, you're not going to want to use heavier creams like I do if you have high density hair. And the last product type is a sealant. So a sealant is basically what you use after you have put your moisturizer in your hair to help seal in the moisture. A sealant can be anything from a natural oil that you might buy like I do from the oil section in the grocery store or it can be an oil or a serum that you buy from the store. Just make sure that it doesn't have mineral oil in it because that is not good for our hair. Tip number four when it comes to building a healthy hair regimen is to make sure that you don't forget about your hair at night. You can do all these great things during the day, such as, you know, making sure you're washing your hair, moisturizing and sealing, deep conditioning. But then when it comes to nighttime, you totally do whatever, forget what you're, you know, forget about your hair, just go to sleep and it's whatever. You can't do that. Nighttime is a great time for damage to happen to our hair. Basically because there's cotton pillowcases that we could be sleeping on that can sap moisture from our hair, can cause friction and breakage. And there's also the way we wear hair at night. If we wear it where it's nice and just loose and flying all over the place, that can also cause friction and it can cause tangles that then we have to take care of in the morning and it's just a hot mess. So when it comes to nighttime, it's very important to have a nighttime routine. I actually shared mine in a video, which I'll link down below. Um, but basically it's figuring out what products you may need to apply to your hair before you go to bed and how you're going to wear your hair. And don't forget to use a satin pillowcase. So tip number five is all about styling your hair and making sure you're doing styles that don't cause a lot of damage to your hair. So you want styles that you don't have to mess with your hair a whole lot, that don't take a lot of messing around, putting your fingers in it, that don't take a lot of manipulation because that can cause damage to your hair um, after you've done all of this, these great things and use these great products to help get it to a good healthy state. 
Also, you want to make sure that you're not wearing styles that are too tight. Like when you wear buns or ponytails, you're not pulling your hair too tight so that you're causing a lot of tension on your edges, which can then make them basically disappear. Tip number six is to remember that hair regimens change. So the products that you might start with today might not be the products that you're using three, four, six months from now. Most of the products I'm using today were ones that I was not even using when I started my hair regimen. So while my hair type hasn't really changed since I began my hair regimen, I have noticed that my hair needs have changed over time. So some of the products that I was using then are not products I'm using now. And so just be flexible about it. Just know that, you know, sometimes that deep conditioner that you love just might not be the deep conditioner that your hair needs a year or six months from now. And my seventh tip is to just stick with it and persevere. Um, having a hair regimen can be pretty daunting. It can take a lot of work sometimes, um, but just sticking with it is very beneficial. You'll start to see the results of how your hair looks, how your hair feels, the compliments you get about your hair, um, and just overall how you are enjoying your hair, how you like the way it looks, how you like the way it feels. So just stick with it, don't give up, and just keep going. So those are my seven tips for building a hair regimen. Hopefully you'll be able to take all or some of them and be able to create your own regimen or modify the one that you currently have. If you found any of these tips helpful, if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Alaska Beauty channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye.